In 1980, 42 years ago, Lego introduced the idea book. It's about the size of a magazine and contained many suggestions for technical models back when that series was called Expert Builder here in the U.S., not yet Technic. The models were arranged in order of difficulty to build. Some of the early models in the book came with full instructions, but by the end of the book, you just had a few strategic pictures and you were on your own to figure out the construction methods. One of the early models in the book is a crane. It's controlled by plates with rack pieces in just the right locations. Depending on which gears in the model are activated by which racks on a plate, the crane moves different directions. The plates are reminiscent of punch cards, which is how you enter data into computers around the middle of the 20th century. Except in a Lego model, the cards are a form of analog technology, not digital. The differences in digital programming, your data is a zero or a one, on or off, based on holes in the card, and that's it. In analog systems, such as these Lego plates full of rack pieces, there's a direct analogy between how much the pieces move and how the model moves in response. I never built the crane when I was a child in the 80s, but I've heard it did not work very well. However, the basic idea of using mechanical parts to control motion is very old. It goes back to ancient Greece. Philo of Byzantium wrote about mechanical programming using weighted pulleys wrapped around gears more than two millennia ago, around 250 years before the Common Era. I decided to build a Lego robot using the same method as the crane. So, it's demo time. This is my robot. As you see, it's got a simple base of plates. It's got a frame made from 1970s, 1980s period expert builder technic parts. It's got treads on each side. It's got a 4.5 volt motor and a gear reduction box and a 4.5 volt 3C cell battery box. Now I'm gonna put it, well I'll show you this first. You see when the tread goes one way, it activates different gears versus the other way. One end is just connected to a single gear. The other end is connected to a double set of gears. And that's so when I put my cards through, they'll spin the correct direction. Now I'm going to put on the screen a sketch of a bird's eye view. In this sketch, the red area is a frame. The black is a tread. The yellow on the black represents axles and gears inside the tread. The yellow internally represents axles. The blue internally represents gears and the gray on the left side represents rack pieces. You can see from this bird's eye view that as the gray pieces slide to the right, they activate different gears, different sets of gears. And the leftmost set of gears, called the back, activates another set of gears in the tread to turn the tread one direction. Whereas the front or rightmost internal gears is a direct connection to the tread. So depending on whether the internal or more internal gears are activated, that controls what direction the tread turns. This is one such card. It's got the gray rack pieces down the center, which are grabbed by the gears, and that pulls the card through. Then it's got black pieces on either side. And again, depending on the offset, on the outer or inner studs, they'll activate the right gears to turn the right treads the right direction and thereby control the robot. So this particular card has the black rack pieces on the same offset, so the robot will just go straight. It would do the same thing if they were on the outer studs. As long as they match on each side, the robot will go straight. Let's try it. Try the other direction. So that's a straight program. This is a turning program where the, the rack pieces are different than each other in terms of their offset. One at the edge and one set inward, one stud. You might hear my cat crying off camera. <laughs> she just wants to be fed. Don't they always? Trust me, she's been fed. Don't listen to her. So we'll try this one. Now 
and back the other direction. That's fun. Now this third card has different offsets at different ends with a missing set of black rack pieces in the center. Uh, that's to make it turn one way and then turn the other way. You have to have the missing ones or else the gears bind up because you're trying to do two things at once. Let's give this one a shot, see how it works. Go back the other way. So as you see, you can only fit so much program per card, but nothing stops you from daisy chaining the cards together, like such. Uh, here again, two different programs with a missing centerpiece so it doesn't bind up, and a simple one by eight plate holding them together. Now it's going to get interesting. And back the other way. Now you're only limited by how long you want to go with these chains of plates. The real world length limit is going to be just two or three plates because it'll get unwieldy. So what I was thinking was perhaps for my next improvement on the robot, I'll add a hopper. It'd be probably not too hard to have a hopper with five or ten cards, whatever you want, stacked up. One goes in, next one pulls down. One goes in, next one pulls down, etc. And it might not be too hard to have an opposite hopper to collect the cards as well. So maybe that'll be a future video. For now, I hope you enjoy this video of my analog electric mechanical Lego robot uh, inspired by the 1980 Lego idea book.